Good morning. My name is Jane Dropa, and I'm vice chair of the Friends of the National World War II Memorial and the proud daughter of a World War II veteran. During this very difficult time for our nation and the world, thank you for joining us virtually to mark the 75th anniversary of Operation Grape Shot, the 1945 Spring Offensive in Italy and the final Allied attack during the Italian campaign in the final stages of World War II. The Friends of the National World War II Memorial is a small nonprofit organization whose mission is to honor and preserve the national memory of World War II and to create the next greatest generation of tomorrow. This morning's ceremony is part of the Friends four-year World War II 75th anniversary commemoration, which kicked off on Pearl Harbor Day 2016 and will continue through the 75th anniversary of VJ Day on September 2nd this year. Friends is the only organization hosting a full four-year 75th anniversary commemoration, marking every major battle in which American troops participated during World War II. As the situation around the novel coronavirus or COVID-19 continues to evolve, Friends is taking the threat seriously and closely following the guidance of public health officials. The safety of our World War II veterans and community is our number one priority in these uncertain times. Our initial plan was to continue with private commemorations at the National World War II Memorial. However, with the City of Washington, D.C.'s recent stay-at-home directive for the safety of our fellow citizens, we have had to once again reimagine our commemorative events. We can't be at the World War II Memorial today, but we can still mark this important World War II campaign. Despite the necessity to social distance and stay at home as much as possible right now, friends still wanted to ensure that every World War II veteran and all of the families of those who served and sacrificed knows that we remember them. We also want to express our solidarity with the people of Italy who are suffering greatly today because of COVID-19. Our thoughts and prayers go out to you. We host these uh, commemorations for a couple of reasons. One is to reaffirm our gratitude and our love for these men, mainly men in those days, of course. The dwindling surviving element, we're losing touch with them. And they represent not only everything we admire in the history of our country, but they seem in our memory to embody virtues that we sometimes don't think we have the way they did. Unsitted patriotism. And as somebody said, it was Ike's biographer, Stephen Ambrose, they embody a virtue which is almost extinct in our time, namely modesty. So I think that's why it's so important for us to remember that generation, and also because we're losing physical touch with them, literally, by the day. I think also that we have a role as a connecting link between them and a rising cohort. Many of those who attend our ceremonies are children, and uh, it's important for them to realize the, the importance of their contribution. What a privilege it is to take part in this our virtual commemoration of the 75th anniversary of Operation Grapeshot. It's important, even in these challenging times, that we continue to remember such occasions. The spring of 1945 saw the start of what would be the final Allied offensive in Northern Italy. Deployed was a force of more than one million men, American, UK, Commonwealth and European allies fighting together, showing our joint resolve. This was nearly a month of hard fighting, 
including amphibious and airborne operations, and a campaign which saw the award of two Victoria Crosses, our highest awards for gallantry, and ultimately secured the German surrender in Italy. Once again, the brave fighting men of the greatest generation showed that we are stronger together. As I think back on the brave actions of these troops, I thank them for their legacy to us and I commend their memory to you. On April 6, 1945, Allied forces launched Operation Grapeshot, the final Allied attack during the Italian campaign. This swift operation, also referred to as the Spring Offensive, resulted in a decisive victory that led to the surrender of the last Axis forces in Italy. Since late 1942, some Allied planners had hoped their forces in Italy could drive north through into Germany. Yet the opening of a front in France in the summer of 1944 turned Italy into a secondary theater. Nevertheless, by 1945, German forces were surrounded on three sides and the Allied 15th Army Group in Italy would, was determined to finish its fight. Axis troops had been forced back to the northern Apennines, yet the experienced defenders, both German and Italian fascist troops, reinforced the Italian terrain into three formidable defensive lines. Their first line ran along the northern Apennines, protecting Bologna and blocking entry into the Po Valley. The second line secured the Po River, while the final line, dubbed the Adige Line, was designed to cover a route of retreat. Though fatigued from a long campaign, the American 5th and British 8th Armies prepared for an offensive to break through these lines codenamed Operation Grapeshot. Instead of aiming to destroy all defenses, the operation planned to penetrate the defensive lines quickly, establish bases for further progress north, and strand large numbers of Axis troops south of the Po before they could withdraw. On April 6, the Allies launched diversionary attacks to the flanks of the Axis lines, meant to pull German reserves away from the site of the main attack. The U.S. 92nd Infantry Division, a segregated unit that included African American troops and the Nisei 442nd Regimental Combat Team, led the attacks in the West. The 442nd mission was to pierce the Gothic line. Major General Elman, a commander of the 92nd African American Division to which the 442nd was attached, asked the 442nd commander, Colonel Miller, how long would it take to break the Gothic line? Miller said, possibly a day. Elman laughed, saying the 5th Army could not do it in the previous six months. The key feature of the 442nd attack was the element of surprise. Each hour of attack was 6 a.m. on April 6, 1945. On the night of April 5, the evening before, the 100 battalion climbed the easier side of Mount Folgorito, and the 3rd battalion climbed the steeper, less traveled backside. Both battalions struck at each hour. They pierced the Gothic line in 30 minutes, neutralized the Gothic line, which was a series of mountains, and that was accomplished by the end of the day. This allowed the 5th Army to pursue the retreating Germans into the Po Valley and northern Italy, such as Genoa and Milan. Germany would surrender in a few weeks later. Truman told the 442nd, you fought the enemy abroad and you fought prejudice at home and you won. These remarks resonated across the land. The remarks also affirmed Japanese-American loyalty, removed from the table the stigma of this loyalty put there in 1941, and placed Japanese-Americans in America's mainstream. 
a very significant event for the Japanese American. Three days later, the Eighth Army, consisting of British, Polish, Indian, and New Zealand troops, launched an attack along the East Coast and began their push towards the Argenta Gap, a pass vital to the advance north. On April 14th, after delays due to fog, the Fifth Army launched their main attack, Despite heavy air and artillery bombardments, Axis defenses remained largely intact, slowing initial progress. Nevertheless, Allied forces persevered, with British troops securing the Argenta Gap by April 19th. American forces, locating weaknesses in the enemy lines, penetrated the mountain defenses into the Po Valley by April 20th. With these successes, the British Army pivoted to link up with the Americans, some of whom captured Bologna by the following day. With the city's capture, Allied forces began to rush north to cut off Axis escape routes. On April 22nd, the 10th Mountain Division reached the Po River, causing many Axis units to look for routes to withdraw. As other Allied units reached the Po, the remaining Axis troops still south of the river were trapped. Many troops abandoned heavy equipment and swam across the river to get away from the advancing Allies, causing disarray and hindering coordinated resistance. Allied commanders ordered a swift river crossing to keep pressure on the scrambling Axis forces. By April 26, the 5th Army reached the Adige Line. As Allied troops advanced, they noticed increasing activity from Italian partisan fighters resisting Axis forces. These groups even liberated several towns like Genoa and Milan before the Allies arrived. In fact, one group of partisans captured and executed a fleeing Benito Mussolini who had been serving as a figurehead for a German-backed puppet state in Milan before its liberation. That same day, with their positions dire, German emissaries arrived at the 15th Army Group's headquarters to negotiate a ceasefire. They signed the appropriate documents on April 29th agreeing to a ceasefire to take place at noon on May 2nd. Until then, fighting continued and Allied forces overcame several remaining strongholds near the Adige River. Allied commanders received the formal surrender of the remaining Axis forces in Italy on May 3rd. The Axis surrender in Italy brought the Mediterranean theater to a close, leaving only the road through the Third Reich itself ahead. Total Allied casualties exceeded 312,000, of which 60% were sustained by the U.S. Fifth Army. That number included 31,886 killed in action, 19,475 of which were Americans. German casualties, meanwhile, exceeded 434,600. By the time of the ceasefire, the Fifth Army had been in continuous combat for 602 days, far longer than any American field army of the war. The spring offensive in Italy also brought a dramatic end to Benito Mussolini's leadership, leaving Nazi Germany alone in Europe without its Italian fascist ally. While some officers merely viewed the action in Italy as a sideshow, the determination and aggressive fighting spirit exhibited by Allied soldiers in this theater in fact forced Germany to divert considerable men and resources from other theaters. These reinforcement efforts not only failed to halt Allied progress through Italy, 
but also hindered Germany's ability to resist Allied forces elsewhere. Today we pause to honor all of the brave Allies who served and to remember those killed during the 1945 Spring Offensive in Italy. They are not forgotten.